Hi people, it's me, Anya, my pronouns are she and her, and welcome back to my channel for a new week to weeds video. As I reflect on how 2024 went as a reading year, I've discovered that I don't think I quite know my reading taste as well as I thought I did, which is really surprising considering how much I read and how long I've been reading, if that makes any sense. So without any further ado, I probably won't be posting a winter TBR this year. So I think that the rest of the videos I'll be posting this year will just be recent reads videos and recommended reads videos. So yeah. Anyway, the first book on this list is called Tangle Root. This story is a YA contemporary that was on my October TBR. And honestly, I didn't like this book very much. It's a YA contemporary following a biracial main character who's unraveling secrets and family history and all this kind of stuff. And the synopsis I gave in my October TBL is much more concise because at that time I was so much more excited for this book and this book disappointed me because first of all, like the history was told rather than shown and I wish that like the characters of the history were told in like flashbacks and their actions were shown to us rather than told. I don't know if that makes any sense. Also, the story for me was far too fast paced and I was just more interested in the history than like the modern times that were happening. If that makes any sense, although the mystery was intriguing, I found the main character, honestly, to be stuck up, especially towards the beginning. But like, I get that, like that was her character arc. I felt like she didn't want to be there, which was the point of the story. And like, she thought that she was like above everything that was happening, if that makes any sense. And she doesn't really get humbled until like too late in my opinion if that makes any sense i didn't care for the romance or anything like that i don't know if that makes any sense at all but basically overall i rated this book three out of five stars so take that as you will the next book on this list is called the graveyard gift this story is a middle grade fantasy and it's the first book in this new series and it follows a young main character at her new magical academy when one of her classmates goes missing. This story is absolutely so fantastic and it's so good. For those who don't know, I love middle grade fantasy, particularly fantastical magical schools. I love a good academic setting. This book was so good. The world building is so magical and so immersive. I loved all the different types of magical creatures and all that kind of stuff. The characters are so well developed and so distinct. I'm so excited to read the sequel, which I think comes out in May of 2025, if I'm not mistaken. The plot was so engaging. The mystery was so awesome. Like I said, I loved the characters. I loved the friendships. The world building is excellent. I was so intrigued from the beginning to the end. This book is so good and it's so awesome. So anyway, with that said, I rated this book four out of five stars and I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called Jupiter, Nettle, and the Seven Schools of Magic. This story is a middle grade fantasy graphic novel that follows a young main character whose plans to go to a very anticipated magical school doesn't go quite the way that she expects. This story is absolutely so fantastic and it's so good. First of all, the illustrations were so pretty and so colorful and they really made the world building so much more immersive and magical than it already was. The plot is so engaging and so intriguing. Like I just said, I love magical schools and this book was so good and so atmospheric. The plot is so engaging. The characters are so well developed and so distinct. Like this book is so fantastic. I'm actually not sure if this book is the start of a new series or if it's a standalone, but if they're all sequels, I will gladly read them. I had really high expectations prior to reading this book once I discovered its existence, just because I've read books before by this author. And like, the most recent one I read was so good. I read it in January. It's this adult urban fantasy book that I'm currently conveniently forgetting the title of. But anyway, this book was so good. And it was really, really awesome. I loved the characters. I loved the atmosphere. So anyway, overall, I rated this book four to five stars and I would gladly, highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called By Forever, I Guess. 
This story is a middle aged contemporary following a young main character whose online persona is more popular than her in real life persona, if that makes any sense, until she starts to branch out. This story is absolutely so fantastic and it's so good. First of all, I love the online identity trope. I love online friendships as someone who has online friendships. And I love the idea of like having a double life, if that makes any sense. Like Hannah Montana, except differently. I don't know if that was a good analogy. But anyway, the story was so good. I loved the depiction of like middle school friendships and what to do when you're friends with the most popular girl in school and then you're not anymore and you're not sure exactly how to make new friends. I think that that concept is really, really interesting and it's super relatable and it's super realistic. The friendships in the story, speaking of, were so wholesome and so lovely. The romance is so cute. The characters are so well developed and so distinct. Like the main character's relationship with her grandmother was so well done and so wholesome. This book is absolutely so fantastic and it's so good. The plot was so engaging and it's so well done. I had really low expectations prior to reading this book because all I've read before by this author are YA fantasies. And it also it's been more than five years since I've read anything by her at all. So anyway, with that said, I rated this book four to five stars. And I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called Mismatched. This story is a YA contemporary graphic novel retelling of Emma. And honestly, I didn't love it that much just because, first of all, I do like the illustrations. The art was very pretty. I appreciate the queer representation. The romance was cute. But I think that I forgot half the characters by like halfway through the book. There were just so many characters to keep track of. And I did not keep track of them because like, I just felt like there were too many of them to keep track of, if that makes any sense. Although I do think that that's the point of the story because again, it is a modern day retelling of Emma. And I think that's what happens in Emma, but I'm not sure because I have not read the original story. You know what I mean? I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but like basically I didn't love this book and I rated it three stars essentially. So take that as you will. The last book on this list and certainly not the least is called The Firelight Apprentice. This story is a middle grade fantasy graphic novel and it follows two sisters against the backdrop of the aftermath of a magical war where magicians were used as soldiers in the war, if that makes any sense. So basically, since one of the sisters is a magician and the older sister is worried about her younger sister's future, I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but this book was so good. And I really, really enjoyed it. And I'm so glad that I found it today in Libby because it was excellent. First of all, the illustrations were so pretty and so vivid and so well done. The world building is excellent and it's so immersive and it's so awesome. The bond between the sisters was so good. And I love how like the older sister's worry for her younger sister was established so well and it made so much sense. The characters are so well developed and so distinct. The plot is so engaging and so intriguing. I had really high expectations for this book once I discovered it because the author previously wrote and I believe also illustrated the Gullick and Vampire duology, which I absolutely loved whenever I read that. And so this book was so good. I rated it four to five stars because I really, really enjoyed it. So with that said, I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. So in conclusion, so far, my reading year in 2024, I can't quite say that it's been better or worse than I thought it was going to be because when I was re-watching my 2023 reading wrap-up video that I posted at the beginning of this year, I realized that I didn't set any specific goals for this year because I'm not exactly where I thought I would be right now in January, if that makes any sense. But like objectively, my reading year has been very, very good. I don't know if that makes any sense at all. I will discuss this more at the beginning of next year, which is very soon. 
So anyway, in conclusion, if you enjoyed this video, please don't hesitate to give it a big thumbs up. Comment down below the vlog emoji if you made it all the way to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you're new. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.